Pinnacles National Park is one of the country's newer national parks that was established in 2013 by President Obama. The park protects multiple tallis caves with different bat species, a historic homestead, stunning rock formations, and many California condors. It's often overshadowed by the other national parks in California and by the way the park is split so that access to both sides is not really possible on a day trip. If you take the time to explore the park though, I'm sure you'll love it like I do. In this video, I really wanted to give you a good understanding of all there is to see in Pinnacles National Park, so I took two days and explored both the east and west entrances. Be sure to let me know what questions you have about Pinnacles after watching, and let's jump into my two days in the park. The east and west side of Pinnacles National Park don't connect, so you basically have to pick which side you want to go to before you go. The east side is the hardest to access as the west side is right off Highway 101. That being said, the east side is a lot better for exploring as it's closer to the main activities in the park. To visit the east side for this trip, I stayed in the town of Hollister which is about 40 minutes north and I drove into the park the following day. Also note that the east side has limited resources for a park that gets this many visitors so it easily fills up on holidays and weekends. I recommend getting into the park as early as possible if you want to be able to park at Bear Gulch, especially when the shuttles are not running. Most people visit in the spring or the fall as it's incredibly hot here in the summer. If you're interested in camping, there's only camping on the east side of the park. Once you drive past the Pinnacles Visitor Center, it's about a 10 minute drive up to Bear Gulch, which is where most of the main hiking trails on the east side leave from. Welcome to Pinnacles National Park. This is the east side. We've made it to the Condor Gulch parking area. I skipped the visitor center, all the other things because I wanted to get up here as fast as I could. This lot often fills up, especially on the weekends and holidays, but today, a Monday in the winter, there's basically no one here. So we're heading out to Bear Gulch and then to the high peaks and then all the way back down. Today's hike, we're gonna be going up through the cave and then across to the high peaks trail and then down the Condor Gulch trail back to where we parked. This trail we're doing today is the most popular in the park and gives you one of the best overviews of the park's top features. You can also access the trail by parking at Bear Gulch, and either way it's going to be a 5-7 to seven minute walk between the parking areas to complete the loop on the way back. We made it to Bear Gulch parking area. As you can see there are 10 parking spots, so if you want to hike from here, get here as early as you possibly can. Now we're heading out on the trail. The trail we're doing through the cave up to the high peaks and back through Condor Gulch is 5.5 miles round trip with 1600 feet of elevation. It's a difficult trail so know that going in. If you don't want to go all the way to the high peaks, you can always just go up through Bear Gulch Cave to the reservoir and then come back down. That's still an amazing east side hike in Pinnacles National Park. Before heading out on the trail, be sure to go to their website and check the status of the cave to make sure they're open. I'll leave a link to that site in the description. When I went, the Balconies Cave and the lower part of the Bear Gulch Cave was open. The upper part of Bear Gulch Cave is only open a couple weeks out of the year and I've never been there when it's open. Don't worry if the upper part's not open when you go there, the lower part is still amazing for Bear Gulch Cave. At this split, you can actually skip the cave if you don't want to go in it. So you can go to the reservoir that way and goes around the cave, or you can go down here and go into the cave. We've made it to the entrance of the cave. Also, don't be like me. I forgot my flashlight at home, so I had to buy this one for $4.99 at Target. We'll see how it goes, but definitely bring a headlamp if you remember. Here we go. This is the last little portion of natural light before the cave gets a lot darker. Here we go. A tallest cave is formed by rockfall, so there are lots of areas where natural light comes in and lots of areas where it's really dark. Plus the rocks make for many sections of uneven footing and differing levels of height as you're going through the cave. It's crazy, there's a lot of water. You can actually hear a waterfall in here. There's a little waterfall right there. Really see it just the bottom so there is some natural light coming in here but it's 
pretty dark when you don't have a flashlight. This first section of the cave climbs steeply on a series of stone steps. There's a better view of that waterfall from above. This part with the stairs is very open and the top of the cave is a good 30 to 40 feet above you in most sections. As you get to the top of the stairs, you'll get to a part of the cave that's much more closed in. This is one of those areas that's not as good for people who are claustrophobic, but it's only a small portion of the cave. This is cool, we're right next to a waterfall. Pretty good one too. This is the entrance to the upper part of the cave, but it's only open one month out of the year because of the bats, so we can't go in there. I actually have never been in there. I'm sure it'd be pretty cool to see. Here's the exit. It's actually the worst part. It's the most tight. This exit is the only place you really have to get small in this cave. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze. Saying goodbye to the Bear Gulch Cave, and now we're heading to the reservoir. That cave should be okay for most people. There's a lot of light through most of the cave, but you still should bring a flashlight. And then there's just that dark section at the end and that place where you have to bend over. If you can do that, you can do the cave. If you can't, go around the other way. It's nice that they allow you to bypass the cave if you don't want to go into it. There's where we exited right there. If you had taken the trail that skipped the cave, you would have came up right here. Both still head up to the reservoir. If you're interested in what the cave looks like from above, you can see all these rocks just crashed in in order to make the cave. It's not like the traditional lava tube, which is cut right out of the rock. These are all done by the cave-ins. Pretty cool to see all these big rocks form in that cave below. From here, the trail continues to head up and goes into another rockfall section before getting up to the reservoir. All right, as we head in here, you guys are about to see one of my favorite views on this trail. Another low crouch down part. This is almost a sit down section. There it is, that massive rock and the stairs that go under it. It's so cool, I'll show one of my pictures right here of when the light was coming in and it looked pretty epic. It's pretty horrible light for photography, but you have to admit, that's pretty cool. The stairs here are what lead you up to the reservoir, which is right on the other side. Just like that, we've made it to the Bear Gulch Reservoir. Look at that water, it's like glass today. Wow. This reservoir was created in 1935 to prevent flooding downstream. Since then, it's become a favorite spot in the park due to the reflection and how beautiful it is with the surrounding landscape. It's also an important place for the red-legged frog, which is a threatened species in the state and which lives around the water in this area. Such a beautiful time at the reservoir. I haven't seen any other people the entire time I've been in the park. If you want a nice, easy hike, you can go up through the caves, come to the reservoir, and then just go back. We're heading up to the high peaks, which is basically all uphill from here. Here we go, heading up to the rim trail. From here, you lose the nice shade you've been used to and you're hiking in the sun uphill all the way to the high peaks. So the hike to the reservoir was only a couple hundred feet of elevation, maybe like 300, and it's about another 1300 to get up to the high peaks. About seven minutes from the water, there's a little spur off the trail that takes you to a pretty cool viewpoint. This viewpoint is pretty far off the ground. It was 31 degrees this morning when I got here, and now it's probably 50 or 60, but it's hot with the direct sun. This is January too. I've been here in July, 
when it was over 105 degrees. So I would recommend not coming in the summer. It's pretty brutal out here. Even in the winter, it can get a little warm. There you go, you can now see the area that we're going up to. There's switchbacks right there, all the way up to the high peaks. As you make your way to the final set of switchbacks before the saddle, you'll get a little bit of shade, which is nice. There's a fun little rock tunnel right before we start the switchbacks. While this section is a little steep, the views are incredible as you're climbing in the rocks that you've been looking at the entire time. As you enter this section specifically, keep your eyes peeled for condor. This entire High Peaks area is where people normally see them. There's the last set of switchbacks right there. We made it to basically the tall point of the trail. There's a restroom up here if you need it. And then there's this amazing bench with this view. From up here you can see all the way down to the western part of the park. The parking lot is right there. We're exploring that part tomorrow. Once you make it here, you still have a long ways to go, but this is a great spot to sit and relax, have a snack, and just enjoy the amazing views. Plus, this is the only place that has a bench, but you may have to share it if there's other people up there. They have a box up here where you can share your thoughts and reflections. It's kind of cool reading some of the things that people thought. One person said that they felt like they were hiking in Lord of the Rings. High Peaks Trail is steep and narrow. This part of the trail does have some sections that are narrow and that have drops on one side. They're not bad, but they may not be great for those who are afraid of heights. So there's condor all over this area, so every little viewpoint you can find, peek down just to see if you see anything flying. Not a condor, that's just a raven. Here's the start of the climb up the high peak section. Narrow rock steps that go along this path right here. This is just a short section right here, and then at the end of the High Peaks Trail, there's a longer section. Right there, that ridge is where we stopped for a snack, and now we are all the way over here. This section is the most well known on the High Peaks with that little part up there where you have to kind of pull yourself up. It looks a lot tougher than it is though. Here's what it looks like as you're going up, looking back down. We made it. That's definitely a pretty, pretty fun little part of the trail right there. This is the last little narrow section of the High Peaks Trail. This section is the longest and the most narrow. There's not much of a drop off, but you do have to get relatively small in a few sections. This section is definitely a little bit narrow. As you're walking along the edge. It's a lot less narrow if you don't have a backpack on your back. It's crazy to think about them making this trail with these drops and trying to put in the bridges, cutting out the rock, it's crazy. There's even a little bridge at the end that traverses two of the rocks, and it's a little bit narrow as you squeeze through the last section. Almost down off of the high peaks and back onto a regular trail. I don't know if those are condor or not. They ended up being turkey vultures. I learned a lot about the differences between condors and turkey vultures on this trip. As you make it off the narrow path, it's basically a 20 foot vertical drop which you use rock steps and a handrail to get down. That section is where we came around the back of with all the crazy trail. From here, you're back on a normal trail which is gradually downhill pretty much the entire way back to your car. So the silver wings on that one means that it's a turkey vulture. That's what I was just told. On this part of the trail, I met a ranger who explained the difference between condor and turkey vultures. 
Condors have a white triangle in the armpit upper part of their wings, where turkey vultures have their white section on the outer part of their wings. The ranger was hiking with his fun sign and let me take a picture with it, but I'm not sure I saw a condor, so I guess I'm gonna have to delete the picture. And there's another turkey vulture right there, right on the trail. I talked to many people on the trail who had seen condor that day, and it was just cool to see all of the birds flying around and enjoying Pinnacles National Park. Whenever I hike this last section down to where it splits off into Condor Gulch, I'm always blown away by how beautiful the landscape is here. I feel like this is one of the best areas to see the unique rock formations in Pinnacles National Park. We made it to a split, we're going to the Condor Gulch Trail. I parked right at the bottom of that. Some pretty neat views of the peaks up there as you're making your way down. And then there's an overlook right there that we're going to, and we make it back through the gulch. This section is all downhill with no shade. People choose to hike up this way, but I definitely prefer hiking up the other way. As you come around this bend, you'll make it to the Condor Gulch Overlook. The Condor Gulch Overlook is a nice little viewpoint from which you can often see Condor and which looks back through the canyon that you hiked through. If you're looking for an easy hike, this can be your destination, but if you're doing something like that, I'd recommend just going to the cave. There's that overlook right in the middle that we were just at. From here, it's just walking down on switchbacks and out the canyon back to where you parked. Even though I wouldn't recommend doing the entire High Peaks Trail in this direction, if you wanted just to have a quick short trail in the park, going to Condor Gulch Overlook, it's definitely a nice way to do it as well. Plus you might see some condor there. The people I talked to had seen a couple of them before I got there. We made it back to the parking area. I spent about five hours on the trail as I took a lot of pictures, looked for condor, just hung out. It was an amazing experience in Pinnacles. I'm gonna show you a few more stops on the east side before we exit the park. I was hoping to peek my head in the Bear Golds Nature Center, but it is closed. But it's right here next to the trail if you wanna see it. Do let me know how the Nature Center is if you visit it. I've actually never been here when it's open. On the way back down to the Visitor Center, I figured I'd show you the other trailhead, which is at Old Pinnacles. This is the old Pinnacles parking area, so you don't actually have to go to the west side of the park at all if you don't want to. You can access the other main point of interest, which is Balcony's Cave, from here as well. But I'm gonna go to the west side just to show it to you tomorrow, so I'm not gonna hike this one today. But you can if you want to. On the way out of the park, there's a peaks viewing area where you can see the high peaks from the main road, but it was closed for construction when I went. There's also a visitor center where you can buy souvenirs, get a stamp, or grab a map. On the east side of the visitor center, there's an unmarked trail that takes you to a historic homestead if you're interested in the area's history. After you cross over the small creek, you'll be at the site of the Bacon Ranch. This area was settled by John Shell and Elizabeth Bacon in the late 1860s. Here we have the garage, and then we have the family home, and then we have the blacksmith shop. Elizabeth's son Ben Bacon was born here and lived his entire life on the ranch. He farmed the area until he died in the late 1930s. Much of what remains is what it would have looked like when he lived here. Pretty cool to see this preserved piece of history, but there's not a lot of information even on this trail in the brochure, so I don't know how long it's gonna be here. That's it for our time exploring the east side of Pinnacles National Park. I'm gonna take an hour drive over to the town of Soledad, and then tomorrow we're gonna to explore the west side. I grabbed a hotel in the town of Soledad and then woke up early to head back into the park. The west side is definitely the easiest way to access Pinnacles National Park as it's a nice 20 minute drive to the parking area. There's no campground on this side of the park and the gate is locked throughout the night so it currently opens at 7.30 a.m. and it closes again at 8 p.m. As you get closer to the park, the road gets really narrow at basically one and a half lanes. They recommend that RVs and large trucks don't try to enter the west side of the park and go to the east side. Here's the little visitor center they have on the west side. It's not open yet because it's too early in the morning but we will stop by here on the way out. I tried to see the visitor center on the way back, but it was closed because of the pandemic, so there wasn't actually anything that you could see there and you couldn't go inside the buildings. 
I made it into the park right as the sun was starting to rise and I was the only car in the parking lot. Good morning everyone. Today we're on the west side of Pinnacles and we're heading out on the Balconies Trail. You can also access the high peaks from here, but we're not going to do that since we did that yesterday. It's 8 a.m. right now and I am the only person in this parking lot. The west side never gets as busy, but on the weekends and holidays it can fill up by like 10 or 11 they say. On the west side there's a bathroom, some picnic benches, binoculars that look at the high peaks, and then a couple of trails. So here's where we are at. This is the Balconies Trail with the other cave. And here's the High Peaks Trail. We came up, went along this way yesterday. Juniper Canyon Trail is what takes you up to the High Peaks and then the Balconies Trail. It's crazy to see frost on the ground and frost on the fence posts as I have been here in 104 degree weather in the summer. Maybe we'll get lucky and see a condor this morning. Check this out, wingspan 9.5 feet. That is crazy. The Trail to Balconies Cave is 2.5 miles round trip with about 400 feet of elevation gain. It's basically flat all the way out to the split and then there's elevation gain on the cliffs portion and then going back through the cave. Some early morning birds up there. I have no idea if those are condor or not. As I review this footage, those are definitely turkey vultures. That area is known as a machete ridge. This trail is really easy to follow as it heads back towards the rocks and towards the cave. As you continue back, you begin walking into a canyon with big rocks on both sides of you. We have made it to a split. That way takes you to Balcony's Cave, and then this way takes you to Balcony's Cliffs. I like doing balconies cliffs first because the cave is not as developed as the other cave with stairs or anything and you kind of have to scramble so it's easier to scramble up than it is to scramble down. So we're going to cliffs first, caves on the way back. Specifically it's easier to scramble up in the dark than it is to scramble down in the dark which is why I chose to go this direction. This way gains about 100 feet of elevation as it goes up on some switchbacks and then it drops all the way down to creek below you. This is a beautiful trail because as you gain elevation, you get closer to the balconies, cliffs, but you get to look back towards the high peaks area. You can see the elevation this trail gains. That's the path that we took down there. All the way around here to where we're at right now. We're basically at the base of the balconies as you cross the high point, the trail just heads downhill until it gets to a dry creek bed and connects with the trail from old pinnacles that we saw yesterday. On the way down, there's a little spur trail that takes you up to a rock and looks down on the rocks that formed Balcony's Cave. This area is so beautiful with all these crazy rock formations. It's so unique because nothing else around it looks like it at all. I've been to Pinnacles many times, but I'll never forget the one time I went here. It was 104 degrees in the summer. I was climbing through that cave and there was this dude who was wearing slacks and a full button up dress shirt listening to Michael Jackson's bad while he was going through the cave. It was super annoying, but it was something I never forget about this park. Luckily on this visit to Pinnacles, I didn't see another person until I got back to the parking lot. All right, we finished the Balconies Cliffs part of the trail and we have connected with the trail that goes to the east side that I showed you the parking lot for yesterday. But we are heading this way into Balconies Cave and back towards the west side. Just another reminder to make sure you check the cave status before you do any of these so that you don't go when they are closed. From the split, you'll be walking back through the canyon along a small creek to get to the entrance to the cave. As you get close to the entrance, the trail gets a little hard to follow, but you're basically just hopping up on rocks until you see it. We have made it to the entrance of Balcony's Cave. Got my trusty $5 flashlight. Let's go exploring. This cave does require a lot more scrambling, so know that going in, it's not as easy to do as Bear Gulch. In this cave, there's a couple sections where you have to get low. It's overall a lot darker and there's no developed steps. So you have to kind of scramble as you make your way up. 
That being said, it's a lot of fun and it feels adventurous when you're exploring. Got a little waterfall in this cave as well. So in this cave, you have to follow these little white marks. So we have to go up and around right there. As you say goodbye to the light, you'll start the scrambling in the dark. If you're going quickly, it only takes about five, seven minutes to get back up to the light again though. This is one you definitely don't want to forget your flashlight on. So this one has a little bit more scrambling. It's not as wide. It's not difficult, but it's way more difficult than yesterday's cave. So you might not be a huge fan of it. Heading up that way. The nice thing about the tallest caves is that there is light that comes in a little bit. And you can kind of already see the exit up there, so not super long cave. Now we're heading up that little piece of rock towards the exit. There's the exit to the cave we just came out of right there. And then we're back in the light. There's one little rugged staircase at the end and then you'll follow the trail all the way out. Here's the official exit to Balcony's cave. You can see the light out there, so not any other real dark sections. There is one section you gotta crawl under though. The last section on the way out is actually super cool with the way that the rocks fall in. You can take some pretty cool pictures here. We made it out the cave. As you exit the cave, there's one more small scramble and then the trail goes back to where we originally split to go to the Balcony's Cliffs Trail earlier. After exiting the cave, that completes our time on the east and west side of Pinnacles National Park. Hopefully you enjoyed this video showing you what you can expect when you visit Pinnacles National Park and be sure to visit it as it's an underrated park in California and one that has a ton of cool places to explore. That hike through Bear Gulch, the reservoir, and the high peaks is one of my top 10, top 15 trails in all of California. Let me know what you think in the comments and we will see you on the next video.